If you have your Bibles, you can turn to uh, Psalm chapter 37, verses 23 and 24. Uh, these are most likely, uh, to some of you, maybe familiar verses. Um, these are verses that uh, come shortly after their, uh, really I'm probably going to read the first part of the chapter here in a moment. Um, but have you ever built something? Have, maybe you have directed something, like Dale was directing up here tonight, uh, I know uh, Andrew directs things out there on an island. Um, whether they want, listen to him or not is another story, but he does direct something. Um, but, uh, you know, when I think of directing, I think of a choir director, I think of an orchestra. Uh, if any of you have been to a symphony orchestra uh, type thing, uh, you can imagine the hard work that goes into leading that many people uh, and getting them all to do what they're supposed to do. Uh, maybe you have built something, I know when I was a kid growing up at Kobiak, I would frequently build something in the craft shop. I remember building a, a, a toolbox, and later on that year, I went down to the gun range and shot the toolbox up with a bunch of random leftover crafts, so it was fun. I used it for something beneficial, I guess. But I remember as a kid, my mom would take the cardboard boxes that uh, were uh, broken down from all the deliveries that we had, and she'd make me a suit of armor out of cardboard boxes. Um, and so things, we build things. There are things that uh, are directed. The idea of the passage we're looking at tonight uh, it has this idea of, of building something, of setting something up, of establishing something. So let's look at our verses this evening. Psalm chapter 37, verses 23 and 24. The steps of a man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his way. When he falls, he shall not be head, hurled headlong, because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. Now, I thought about tonight singing a solo for you and having Jerry play the song that the Wilds uh, has this, uh, based off of this song, but I figured you'd all get up and leave. So I chose not to do that. Um, but the steps of a good man... Uh, really, and, and some translators actually put the word good in there. Uh, it's not in the original language. But this verse says, The steps of a man are established by the Lord. And based on the context, this chapter is really showing uh, how those who are righteous are secure in God. God is, uh, is, protects those who are righteous. Because there's people asking the question, we see this throughout Scripture, and we still ask the same question today, why do the wicked prosper and why do the righteous seem like they always suffer. And the psalmist, which uh, David uh, wrote this psalm, and David went through a lot of ups and downs in his life. And not, I'm not talking about spiritually, he just went through a lot of situational ups and downs in his life. Um, he had things such as his son trying to kill him. He had Saul trying to kill him. Uh, he had uh, so many other things going on in his life. And when, when we think of this psalm, and, and as we look through these two verses, the big idea for this evening is that we can aggressively live for God. We can aggressively live for God. And you say, well, why do you say, use the word aggressively? Well, because I guess I'm just an aggressive person. No, I don't. I, when I think of living for the Lord, and as I was studying this passage out, and as we come to the conclusion tonight, I hope that you come to the same conclusion. That because of who God is and what he does in our lives, you can aggressively live for God. When I think of the idea of being aggressive, I, it's, it's, you're not holding anything back. Typically when you're aggressive, that means there's confidence in what you're doing. Just using the analogy of sports, when I know what I'm supposed to do out on the basketball court, I guarantee you I can be aggressive about it. 
And there are times where I was very aggressive about something because I knew the task that my coach had given me. And when it comes to living for God, this, these two verses really are to be encouraging for us. And so let's look at them this evening. First of all, God established our life's journey. Why can we live aggressively for God? Because God has established our life's journey. In verse 23, it says, The steps of a man are established by the Lord. The idea of steps here is just simply a person's life, the way you live, your life, your, the, the, your walk in your life. It's, it's uh, using uh, imagery of, of each of our steps, that every aspect of our life, God, God has ordered it. Or the word here that we use in the, our, in the New American Standard is the word established. What does that word established mean? Well, it has this idea of, of secure. It has this idea of, uh, establ- of, of established. It's the idea of set up. Of, it's, it's something that is built up. It's, and God has ordained it. God providentially has set forward your journey in your life. The righteous says the steps of a man are established by the Lord. See, God orders the steps of a man, not only his way in general, I'm quoting from someone here, by his written word, but his particular steps. He does not always show him his way at a distance, but leads him step by step. And why does God do that? How many of you have ever thought, I wish I could see the future? to a degree. You know, you, you, I, you can go back and forth. I don't really want to see the future. That could be really discouraging or, you know. But I'm sure all of us have watched the films Back to the Future. Maybe not, but you've heard of them. And, and the idea of the future is, is something that a lot of people think about. What's, what's going to be in my future? Well, God's ordered your steps. God's established your life. He has a plan for your life. He knows every aspect of your life. He knows everything that's going to come into your life. And he does it so that we depend on him. Sometimes he doesn't let us, he doesn't want us to know what's coming because then we can depend on him. But you can see how we can live aggressively. If, if we can live aggressively knowing that God's given us the plan. So when we wake up in the morning as a believer, we can wake up saying, you know what? I can live aggressively for God because God already knows what's going on. God's already, God's given this. All I have to do is follow. All I have to do is do what God wants me to do. And that's something that we can do aggressively. We can do energetically. Psalm 145 verse 14 says, the Lord sustains all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. You know, God sustains us. God sustains us. He raises us up. Psalm, Proverbs 20, verse 24, Man's steps are ordained by the Lord. How then can man understand his way? Psalm 119, verse 5, Oh, that my ways may be established. It's the exact same word, Hebrew word, that uh, as in our text tonight. Oh, that my ways may be established, they may be ordered, they may be set up to keep your statutes. In the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 4.9, Paul is talking, he says, we have been persecuted but not forsaken. He says, we've been struck down but not destroyed. Jeremiah 10.23 I know, O Lord, that a man's way is not in himself, nor is it in a man who walks to direct his steps. Look down in verse 17, uh, look up at verse 17 of our our passage of Psalm 37. It says, For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord sustains the righteous. He has set up our lives. What happens in your life is not a surprise to God. God has ordered and set up your life. He has a plan for you. We 
when I think of a God having a plan for my life, I sometimes go back to just thinking about Joshua for whatever reason. Have you read, read Joshua 1? And here God is speaking to Joshua and he tells him, I want you to go and I want you to, my plan for you is that you go conquer the city of Jericho. What, is, what does God do to Joshua? God says, be strong and of good courage. God knew, had a plan for Joshua. He's saying, Joshua, you can trust me. Because God has ordered our steps, we can trust him. No matter what's going on in our life. See, God supports and delights. It says, the steps of a man are established by the Lord and he delights in his way. The delight that David speaks of is that God delights in the righteous and shows his divine favor to those walking in the way God has established. God's grace. Aren't you glad that God favors you? (laughs) The God of the universe favors you. And he delights in us walking in his way. He delights in it. It brings joy to him. He delights in every part of the journey he has us on because it gives us the opportunity to daily depend on him and to bring him glory. It should excite us that we get to praise God. We can glorify God because we can live as he... It delights him. Have you ever, growing up, or even now, isn't it, do you get excited when you, when you please somebody? You know that it brings them delight because you've done something that pleases them? As a kid growing up, when I did something that pleased my dad, it brought so much joy to my life. Not because I wasn't getting in trouble, but it just brought so much joy into my life because I saw the smile on my father's face. Because I did something that pleased him. With my family being gone, I'm looking forward to seeing them when they get home. I'm just excited. I don't even know where that came from. Probably because I've been without them for a week and I just can't st- not talk about them. It has nothing to do with the message. I don't know where that was going. I guess God had a plan for them to be gone for a week and a half. I guess that's the, that's, that's the part of the message. But God... And really tonight is so much more devotional in, in nature with this psalm. You know, I, there, honestly, the commentators, don't, the commentators don't have a lot to, I mean, these are pretty self-explanatory verses. They really are. That our ways, our life has been established. Do you get excited about that? Do you get excited to wake up in the morning and know God has a plan for me? God has a plan for me. He goes on in verse 24. He says, And when he falls, he shall not be hurled headlong because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. I think the King James says, He shall not be utterly cast down. This has been frequently, this verse has been actually uh, explained in a way, speaking of falling or stumbling uh, in sin. And if you look at the context, that's not what it's talking about here. There are other passages in Scripture that talk about that. But here he's really talking about this delighting in the way. He's talking about the, the steps that have been established for us, the life that has been established for us by God. He says, in that, in that journey... When he falls, he shall not be hurled headlong or utterly cast down or utterly fall into failure. Have you ever been going through something in your life and just feels like you can't get back up? Because here in this verse, we see our second point that God restores our walk amid difficulty. God restores our walk amid difficulty. I remember when we, we left Illinois and 
we were coming, and I didn't know what the journey the Lord had me on. I didn't know where. I didn't know what I'd be doing, to be honest. And I remember about a month in, after living with my wife's uncle and aunt for a month, still not having a place to live, and, and just asking the Lord, Lord, what are you doing? And I'll be honest, I didn't respond biblically. I didn't respond righteously at all in a lot of it. God had to do some work in my own life. He had to strip away layers of my life to say, hey, I've got a plan for you. I've got a plan for you. And I remember just feeling literally like my life, honestly, I had no clue what was going on. No control. Mentally, did I, did I know God was there? Yeah, I mean, I was actively in church every Sunday. I was doing all those things. But the people around me probably wouldn't unless they were close to me. But I just felt the weight of the world on me. I felt compacted. And I don't remember what I was re- I was actually reading a couple psalms and I remember just getting on my knees and saying, Lord, thank you for giving, this, giving me this, realizing you're in control. You providentially allowed this to happen in my life. You knew this was going to happen before you even brought me into the world. You have a plan for my life. And at the time, I did not think it would be three and a half miles down the road. (laughs) But there are times in our lives where we just feel weighed down. We feel we've stumbled. Not that we've stumbled in sin, but we're we're just struggling. We are struggling with the temptation to give in to that discouragement and that depression. Because things just aren't going the way we want them to go or we expected them to go. First Corinthians 10.13 says, No temptation, the word there is talking about trials, but no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above, beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape so that you will be able to endure it. God doesn't give us more than we can handle. He's there. He's ordered our steps. He delights in that way that he, is, that he has given to us. He delights in it. And he's there to reach down and to grab our hand and to pick us up. One commentator said this, when God visits his servants with severe afflictions, he at the same time mitigates them that they may not faint under them. See, the miseries of the godly are so tempered with God's fatherly mercy that they fail not under their burden, and even when they fall, sink not into destruction. And see, the only difference between them and the unbelieving is this, that their, their falls the believer's falls, the righteous falls are not deadly. I remember when I was pastoring down in Illinois, it was some relative of another relative. It was a funeral I had to go to. I wasn't doing it. And afterwards, the complete opposite of faithful Fred, of Fred. I don't know any, a whole lot of people, but I remember there's a man in the front row at the end of the funeral, about two-thirds of the way through the funeral, started weeping. And I'm not talking just crying. Just weeping loudly. And did it for almost 20, 30 minutes. I think when I left after the funeral, he was still doing it. And you could hear the hopelessness in that man's voice, in his cry. There's no hope in the unsaved. When they fall their falls are, dead, are deadly. But our Savior is there to pick us up. 
to pick us up. Solomon in Proverbs 24, 16 writes, For a just man falls seven times and rises up again. We, we can face frequent afflictions in life, visited with daily trials, and yet are never forsaken by the Lord. We're never forsaken. We must look to God and trust God. Look at later on in the passage. And it says, when he, because the Lord is the one who holds his hand, I can just, maybe the imagery comes to your mind of a father and a son walking. And, and almost, and, and that son trips. And you, grab their, you, and you grab their hand even tighter to keep them from falling. That's what comes to my mind. God is there. God is there. Job 19.28 says, If you say, how shall we persecute him? And what pretext for a case against him can we find? See, God, the root of the matter in Job, and in, in, in him, what Job understood. God will not suffer him to be defeated, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. The Lord supports him. Martin Luther said, if he falls, God catches him by the hand and raises him up again. The psalmist later on in Psalm 56, verse 13 says this, For you have delivered my soul from death, indeed my feet from stumbling. And stru- sorry, my feet from stumbling, so that I may walk before God in the light of the living. We can live aggressively because God establishes our life's journey. We can live aggressively for God because God restores our walk amid difficulty. We can depend on Him. See, the psalmist in 56 is expressing the weight of life on Him and how He was stumbling and struggling. They, the, the psalmist literally is saying, I- I'm struggling just to, to keep on walking, to keep on hoping. How many times do we see David in his psalms that he writes? How many times do we get, can you just hear his voice? He just feels literally beat down. And then later on in the psalm, what does he say? It says something along the lines, but God. But God. And maybe you might be going through something in your life's journey this evening that is heavy. God's here. God's here. He wants to hear you talk to him. Pray. Share your burdens with him. He's, his hand is reaching out for yours. Don't think you can get, don't try to go through these difficulties on your own. God's there. He's there to pick you up. God delights in you and in His grace wants to restore your footing. He doesn't want you to falter. He wants to help you get up and keep in walking before Him. Psalms again in Psalm 116 verse 8 says, For you have rescued my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. See, our God is, an un, is unfailing in His protection. He's unfailing in his protection. He's ordained, set up, established your path, your journey. He will not be unfaithful in directing your steps. He knows where you, he wants you to go and he's going to direct those steps. No, he's probably not going to use a neon sign or some octagon on the side of the road. <laughs> but he's going to use something. Use his word, for sure. Godly counsel around you. The preaching of his word. 
godly friends and family. Sometimes he even does use the negative things around us to direct us, to protect us. See, we can be encouraged that God is our protector and that he delights in our lives. God delights in you. So we can live confidently because God watches over us. You know, I can live actively and aggressively because God's going to direct my steps. When I am following what God wants me to do, we can be so aggressive in it. We don't have to, well, I wonder. No, you don't have to wonder when you're living for the Lord. You just do it. You do it with excitement and and vigor and, and all the different adjectives you can come up with and superlatives you can come up with. The story is told of David Brainerd. Pomox in hand, the Indians crept toward the strange tent. As they cautiously peered under the flap, their intention to kill David Brainerd was forgotten. There in the center of the tent was a man on his knees. As he prayed, a rattlesnake crossed his feet and paused in position to strike. It lowered, it, but it lowered its head, did not strike, and slithered out of the tent. It was a long time later when David Brainerd, the man in the tent, found out why the Indians at the village received him with such honor as they did. He had expected that they would want to kill him. The reason for their change of heart was the report their comrades had brought of the marvelous thing they had seen. The Indians looked upon David Brainerd as a messenger from the Great Spirit, (laughs) which we know God genuinely is the Great Spirit. He is the Great God. And in all good work, the protection of God is with the worker. We have God's protection on our side. There are wicked people all around us. And does it seem like they're prospering? Does it seem like sometimes their lives are going so much better than ours? But if we were to read all of this psalm, we would see that there is judgment coming on the wicked. There is judgment coming on the wicked. God protected David Brainerd and he's going to protect you. No matter what's going on in your life, he's there. He's there. You know, God is such an amazing God. And this was a shorter sermon tonight. You're all like, oh wow, this is early. Pastors should be gone more often. But I want us just to, I'm going to take time to pray here and just just meditate on the truth. Meditate on the truth that God's there. God is there. Even when we don't think it. Because we serve a wonderful risen Savior. You know, I didn't, I told Jerry this week, earlier this week that, or maybe it was yesterday, I don't remember when it was, that I had changed my Sunday night sermon from when I sent it to him. Did you see what one of the songs was? God leads his children along. We have a Savior who's returning. We can sing a hallelujah, praise the Lord. He's there. He promises to never leave or forsake us. Because the steps of a man are established by the Lord and he delights in his way. And when he falls, he shall not be hurled headlong, because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, tonight, we looked at, at a truth about you. A truth that we've, we've heard before. A truth that You are there. We've heard the verse quoted many times that you'll never leave or forsake us. 
We've heard the verse quoted that, and maybe we, all of us in this room or some of us have memorized that you will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because trust in thee. But the verses we looked at tonight show us that we can have a complete trust in you all the time because you ordered our steps. You've established our walk, our life. So there's, there's no reason to hold back. That should excite us. I pray, Lord, that we would live excited about life because you've ordered our path. You have a plan for us. We know that we don't know every aspect in and out. And really, we, most times, we don't even know what the next day is going to, to have for us. And you lay out in your word how we are to live righteously. And through that righteous living, you direct through your providence each step that we are to take. It's very amazing to see your power work in each of our lives. And even when we're in the middle of it, Lord, we don't fully understand it all the time. And when life gets heavy and burdensome and we begin to stumble and and struggle, you reach your hand down and you lift us up. You're there. Lord, I pray that we would go out this week, this month, this year, and just live aggressively for you. Because we know you're in control. Because we know you're there to protect us. Oh, what a wonderful truth that is. So Lord, I pray that you would receive all the honor and glory through the way we live. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you.